and welcome to our ninth grade counseling presentation. My name is Rebecca Alcaraz and I'm the ninth and 10th grade counselor at North Tahoe High School. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. This um, presentation will be in English as well. I'm going to be doing a separate Spanish presentation. So um, here on the screen, you're going to see some information about how to get in contact with me. Um, my phone number, my extension, where my office is, and my email address. Some quick information about me. I recently moved from New York City, but I did grow up in Truckee, went to Truckee High. I am a local. I do enjoy living in the area. Um, I have an, a master's degree in school counseling and a master's degree in psychological counseling from Teachers College. I love to travel and hope to start traveling more soon. Um, hopefully the next de destination will be Greece. And I do enjoy participating in Spartan races and hope to complete the one in Tahoe one year. So what does a high school counselor do? So a high school counselor works with students to support them in every domain. So that can be social, emotional support, academic support, and career support. So as a high school counselor, I may change schedules at the beginning of the year. I may help students stay on track for graduation and check their credits or their grades. I may support a student socially and emotionally with anything going on in school or outside of school. Um, I will provide solution focused counseling and provide support with after high school workforce opportunities. So thinking about careers, um, programs, um, any opportunity that might help a student after high school. So if you would like to get in contact with me, I do have a, diff a few different ways that you can do that. So um, we can always meet online or talk over the phone or talk in person. Um, our schedules do get pretty busy, so it is advised to make an appointment. But of course, you can always um, you know, check to see if you can walk in and meet with me. Um, we do have some social media sites, so Facebook and Twitter. Um, and then we have our own um, counseling website through the school. So you um, should check that out because that's updated very regularly. So um, if you have any questions, definitely ask me. Um, but also um, there are different ways to get other information that you might be looking for. Like I said, our counseling website is a really great website for that. And on the screen, you'll see how you can get to that counseling website. Um, so if you go to our school website, there is a programs tab at the top, and then there is a drop down menu that you can click school counseling, and that will take you to our website. This um, slide shows what our website looks like. This is just the top. Um, you can keep scrolling and it has a ton of information, but there you will see a link to book an appointment. So you can book an appointment that way, or like I mentioned, give me a call, um, or you can see if you can walk in to meet. Um, but yeah, that website is really, really great. It has information about enrollments or the wellness center or um, scheduling um, your ILP meetings or just a lot of great information. So please get familiar with that. And then here you can see that you have different um, options to schedule a meeting. So we have 30 minutes, we have 15 minutes. Um, and so just depending on your question or how much time you might need, just make sure to, to um, select the correct uh, uh, meeting times that you might want. So additional supports that we offer, so North, um, North Tahoe High School is very lucky to have a wellness center and that is staffed by Hilary Jimenez and she's really great. Um, so a lot of what she does is support our students in the social and emotional realm. So just another great resource. We also have a school psychologist, Jordan Wolf, and he is also available. And then 
Uh, we will be having a social worker who is Viviana, and she was here last year. So hopefully she'll be starting back up with us soon. And just another, like I said, another really great resource to have. Um, so of course you have myself as uh, a support, but these other three adults are great. And then here is Hillary. Uh, try and play this. So I don't think the sound is working, um, but she just goes over what the Wellness Center is. Um, this video is on our YouTube channel as well, I believe. So it's just a really great um, explanation of what we offer in the Wellness Center. Um, and like I said, she just focuses on working with our students specifically in the social emotional realm. And she is a great support for everyone. The Wellness Center is located by the library and it's just a great space that you can go to to take a break, um, to vent, to talk about anything that's going on. We also have snacks up there and games and it's just a great hangout spot. Um, and we also host clubs up there and have groups. So like I said, overall really great resource if you need a safe space to go to in our building. So Jeff is our 11th and 12th grade counselor, and he is a great support for upperclassmen. Um, he's very knowledgeable in topics like college, careers, transcripts, and life after high school. So again, another really great um, resource that we have here and another adult that can support our students. So um, the counselor-student parent relationship. So parent norms, you know, um, high school is a really great time for our students. It's important that we encourage and support our students, but also allow them to have their own responsibilities. So it is a time where they start to become independent. That's great. We want to support them in that. Um, start conversations with students about future plans. Now is the time, even though as a freshman, it may feel um, really early to have these conversations. Um, you know, time goes by so quick and it's okay if your child may not know exactly what they want to do after high school, but at least get them thinking about it. Um, help to create healthy habits that support staying on track. For example, um, study habits, um, even like eating healthy and, um, you know, confiding in adults and just creating those healthy habits that will allow them to continue to be successful in high school. Students, it will definitely help if you begin to think about future career and college choices. Like I said, it may feel a little early, but just to start thinking about what you might want to do after high school. Um, create an organization system that helps you remember to do your homework and remember important events. So that could be an academic planner. It could be using the calendar on your phone. But getting that system in place um, as early as possible will really help set you up for success. And also creating good relationships with all individuals on campus. So teachers, admin, other students. It's really helpful for you to have those good relationships. Um, it just makes you feel more comfortable in school and um, safe and like you're on the right track. Um, so really getting those um, good relationships moving and in place. So remember that teachers are an important factor in your child's success. So talk with teachers, communicate with them. They are here to help. You can get an in contact with teachers through emails, probably the easiest way. But also, um, you know, every class has a phone. And um, so definitely communicate because they are here to help. This year is important. Support your child. Um, support your child and have them dig themselves out, out of an academic hole that is difficult to recover from. So, you know, when we talk about getting in an academic hole, that could mean failing classes or not showing up to class, um, having a lot of tardies or, um, 
you know, low attendance, like I mentioned. So all those things can create a deep hole that can be it can be hard to recover from, even with summer school or credit recovery. Um, so just support them in getting themselves out of that if they begin to fall in that direction. Um, like I said, communicating with teachers is going to be really important, especially to dig themselves out and then using the re resources that we have. So encourage them to seek help when they need it. Um, some of the resources that we offer our students are using RTI, which is a one hour time frame every Wednesday and Thursday so that your child can go to any class where they might need help. Um, we can set things up during lunch before school, after school, um, we can set up uh, a plan with the teacher as well to make sure that they are getting on the right track. And then of course, don't take yourself too seriously in high school. Yes, it can be an important time in life, um, but also really fun. It's a time where you get to learn more about yourself and um, you know, really start to think about life after high school. So have fun. Um, yeah, definitely don't take yourself too seriously. So on the screen, you will see a graphic of high school graduation and college entrance requirements. And these are just, um, you can see here's a comparison of what each um, program might require. So there's high school graduation versus community college versus the CSU and UC systems. So, um, you know, you'll see some similarities. For example, English, you need four years of English, which is 10 credits per year. Um, math, it can be a little bit different depending on your goal. Um, science, you need 20 credit, credits minimum. So that's one life and one physical science class. And then social studies, you will see that that's a bit different as well. For graduation, you need government, econ, yeah. and so on. You will also see that arts might be a bit different, foreign language might be a bit different. Um, it's always recommended to go above and beyond the minimum requirements, especially if you are hoping to apply to a competitive school. And then again, you can see that PE health, you do need that for graduation and for community college, but not for the UC or CSU system. So some differences, but some similarities. Overall, you do need two years of history. Um, every class in this in the categories that I'm going to mention must be passed with a C minus or better to make sure that you are A through G eligible. When I say A through G, um, you know each category is going to be listed on the top left corner. But A through G are the different categories that you see in CSU's. Um, will have requirements in for you to be able to apply to those schools as a senior. So again, you need two years of history. We have the courses that we offer listed on the bottom. Government and econ, again, is for um, graduation, but I did put it in there just so that you are aware and remember that you need government econ as a senior. You need four years of English, all with a C minus or better. So again, if you fail a class or um, you know you get a D, for example, if you get a D, you are receiving the credits towards graduation, but you are ineligible to apply to those four-year schools. So remember your goal and remember not to get behind. Um, four years of English, if you get an F in English, it's especially hard to make that up because you do need one year each year to get to stay on track. So if you fail anything, then you don't receive your credits and you're not on track to graduate. Math, you need three years of math. So what we offer is listed. Four years is what is recommended. You need two years of a lab science. So again, you see AP opportunities as well as non-AP opportunities. Um, although you do need two years of a lab science, three and four years is what's recommended, um, especially if you are hoping to go into the medical field. 
you need two years of a language as part of um, being A through G eligible. So that's category E. It is recommended to go up to three years. And we do offer AP Spanish here. You need one year of visual or performing arts. So what we offer is listed. That's category F. And then category G is a college prep elective. So what we offer is listed as well. And then any additional A through G courses taken will then meet the elective requirements. So freshmen, um, your number one job this year is to focus on being successful at school. Your grades do matter, but learning the content, the content matters more. So CSU and UC schools do take ninth grade grades into consideration for admission, right? They're gonna see your entire transcript, which includes ninth grade. You do need to know the course content to be successful in future grades. So um, if you feel like you are not understanding the concepts, make sure to use RTI to go over that with your teacher because each year all courses will build on each other for the most part. So make sure that you are understanding what you're learning. Uh, find out what type of learner you are. You know, are you super visual? Are you um, an auditory learner? So once you figure that out, it can really help you um, be successful because you kind of know how you learn best. Get organized. Again, make sure to use a really good system, so like a planner or a calendar, a calendar to set reminders, um, an alarm system, whatever you need, because organization is extremely important in being successful. And start the student-teacher relationship strong. I know that um, it can be hard to make new relationships, but make sure that you are doing your best to be respectful, to listen in class, um, just so that you are staying on the right track. Get involved in school. So, you know, high school can be a really great time and it can be better if you get involved, you know, just promotes having more fun, meeting more people. Um, so you can join a club. We have tons of clubs, tons of sports. You don't have to be great at the sport, but if you're involved, it can help high school go a little bit quicker. Um, and then of course we have community service. So we will touch on that in a little bit. So you should, as a freshman, start to research colleges and careers. Start to think about what you might want to do. Like I said, um, you don't have to know exactly. It can change every single year, but start to kind of um, get an idea of what your interests are. Take as rigorous a schedule that you can be successful with. For one student, it may mean taking four AP courses. For another student, it might mean just taking one or none. So the most important part is that you are successful in your classes. Look into summer opportunities like volunteering, summer programs, having a summer job. So all of that can really help build your resume. And you can always come and meet with me if you are unsure of what, you know, what your plan is or um, you don't really know where to start. You can always meet with me. We can plan everything together and I can answer all your questions. So community service um, for graduation, all students have required hours. Freshmen have six hours per year and then it increases after that. So total, you need 30 hours for graduation. That it, you do have a yearly requirement to pass your pathways class. So please remember that. So as a freshman, you have six hours required this year. Um, to pass your, oh yes, I already mentioned that. To pass your pathways class, you must complete your community service. Um, the activity must be pre-approved by completing the form. The form is in the front office, so fill that out and then get it approved before you start your community service. And then Pathways Teacher is the student contact. So once you get approval, um, they will log it and then that is reported to the teacher who then reports it to the office. So here on the screen, you're gonna see a picture of a transcript. So I just quickly wanted to go over what this transcript um, can help with. So it has a lot of good information about the student, the address, 
of the school. And then on the bottom, you'll see the weighted and non-weighted GPAs. Um, so that's going to be really, really important. On the screen, you can see um, in every semester, we have the credits attempted, the credits completed, the GPA for that semester. Um, and then again, you'll see the weighted and non-weighted. So this is what uh, colleges or those two-year programs will see. So like I said, they can see a lot of information, what you completed, what grades you got, um, the weighted GPA, the non-weighted GPA. So they're going to be able to see a lot of your academic um, information through this transcript. So we are going to start introducing a program called SCORE. So this is a college career and um, application financial aid tool available to all students. Ninth grade will be um, getting an introduction to this program soon, but it is something that we're going to be um, going over year after year, and each year you'll have different tasks to do on that program. Students have accounts and will participate in personality inventories, career research, college, college planning, and communication. It's accessible from home, so you don't have to be at school when you are looking through this. Um, so that's really great. You can you have access no matter where you are. And like I said, it will build on each other every single year. So every year you will be using this program. Okay, and um, last, you will see a lot of information about how to get a hold of me or other phone numbers that you might need. So an emergency number, suicide prevention line, family resource center. So those are all really great, important numbers to have. And then, of course, my contact information is on there. And that is all. So if you have questions about anything that I said and did not... Um, you know, or you didn't get your answer, um, you can always email me and we can set up an appointment or we can just communicate via email or phone. And that way I can answer all the questions that you might have. Thank you so much for joining us on this um, presentation and I hope it was helpful.